and welcome to Chips LinkedIn Live. I am so glad to be here this morning with Dr. Georgette Zanotti. Uh, we started this as a way to showcase some of the amazing work from members in the Chips community who are advancing women in tech law and policy. We have a very exciting episode this morning. Dr. Zanotti is currently the executive vice president at Corporate Class and practice lead for their Center for Diversity and Inclusion. She is the founder of uh, Hugh Woman, and we'll hear more about that. And she is also the co-chair of Chips Toronto chapter, joining us this morning from Naples, Florida. Welcome, Georgette. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, let's dive right in. I was so excited to see a post on LinkedIn this morning from someone you've mentored who shared what you've taught about the power of one. Tell us more about this big idea. Yeah, that was so nice. I was actually, I said to her, I said, I was moved to tears this morning when I saw the post. So um, Melissa Ellis is a young woman that uh, I mentor. And it really actually started, it's a great little story. It started with a, a message I got from LinkedIn, LinkedIn, if you can imagine, about a year and a bit ago. And it was a message that came through saying, can you look at a PowerPoint presentation? And uh, I said, well, actually, uh, why don't you show it to me? And I'll give you 30 minutes of my time. And so she said that, sent this presentation, outstanding. And it was really for, um, you know, STEM and uh, Black businesses and how to create this great opportunity to uh, support 100 Black businesses in, in science, technology, and, and so forth. And so she knocked it out of the park. I, it was like a couple of tweaks that needed uh, to be done. And I said, this is really great you know, where are you pitching this? And she's, well, we'd really like to be in universities. And this is where I think this, this space could be. And I went, uh, who are you talking to? And she said, well, you know, you know, a couple of people here. I said, well, this is who you should be talking to. Uh, let me help you make a couple of introductions. And so I did that because <laughs> I had connections to be able to do that for her. And, you know, and, and since then we've been mentoring. And so it was interesting because she said, you know, she she had a great idea. She had a you know great opportunity and I've been encouraging her, mentoring her sis and kind of helping her navigate. And so it was so nice today because she said, you know, one idea, one voice and, you know, all of this. And so I said to her, you know, I just opened, I kind of opened the door. You just, you know, rushed right in. And I'm so proud of her and all of the wonderful things that she's done. And so I'm a strategic advisor to the organization as well. And uh, I just am, just full of pride for all the wonderful things that she continues to to do and, and see. So I always talk about like the power of one because it takes one person, but each of us has a role to be able to open a door, you know, and they talk about the ripple effect of all the things that we can do and achieve. I, as you were saying, being moved to tears, I was feeling so overwhelmed by what you were saying, Georgia, and I think it speaks to the power of chips. I feel this way in so many of these conversations mm -hmm. with chips members where um, in it's hard to, to realize that the whole world doesn't work this way because I come in and I meet people like you who are doing these extraordinary things. And it seems like it could be so simple, right? It's not that hard to say, you know what, I know someone and I can help you. But a lot of people don't do that. And so here in this CHIPS community, we have women like you who are actually doing it. Is there something that you think um, makes it easier for you to do this? And how, how do we help people who maybe just don't, take that five seconds to help someone to say, I, I know someone, let me introduce you, or I, I can actually make a difference here. Yeah. So, you know, so here's what's interesting. So I didn't know until recently when she was, uh, so I got her an opportunity. So I was speaking at the World Diversity Conference and I thought, I'd love to give her this platform. So um, I encouraged them to, to, to do that. And as part of that process, I found out she had actually sent that same email to 50 other people. I was the only person that responded. Imagine that. So I said to her, well, there are lots, <laughs> you know, what a great thing. So, uh, you know, I think part of it is a bit of your DNA. And I think part of it is, you know, I, I, you know, if you imagine the opportunity of helping someone and how good that feels. And I know you can't help every single person that knocks on your door, but if you can afford to give somebody five, 10 minutes of your time, imagine the transformation that could happen, right? So I, I think part of it is that. The other part, I, I always encourage people the other way. So if you're going to make an ask, think about the ask that you're making. So I get lots of requests on LinkedIn. And I say to people when I do, you know, talk about networking or mentoring, I say, don't say, hi, can you get me a job? The answer is, I don't know you. The answer, no. But if you said to someone, 
hi, could you look at something? Or I've been following you. I think what you're doing is really fantastic. Could you look at something and maybe give me 15 minutes of your time? Most people will probably say yes. I often will say yes, even if I'm busy. If I think someone's doing really good work or they look like they've got something, I'll find 15 minutes. You know, I try to help as often as I can when I can. That's been my nature since I was yeah, big. And, you know, I believe in doing good. You do good, good comes back. Um, and I hope that most people can sort of see that a little bit. And we talk about the ripple effect of that circle, especially when it comes to women helping women. If we don't do that, who's going to help us if we don't help each other? That, you know, you've got to throw that net out wide. And if we don't do that, we're not going to create that ladder of accountability to get ourselves up there. It absolutely does come back. And I'm so glad you said that because when we help others, we are helping ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just this powerful ripple effect, like you mentioned. So what is your advice for people who don't know how to get started, who need some help practicing this pay it forward and leading by example? Yeah. So, you know, part of it, I think, is thinking about your network. Uh, that's so important. So a lot of us, I think, think, well, okay, I don't know where to begin. And I think, well, think about what your network actually looks like. Um, so I often talk about networking up, not just across. So most of us have, you know, this network where we're in the kind of the same circles and we have our same friends. And I think that's really good. Now, how are you kind of networking up? How are you developing that skill set? So that's one. Two, thinking about networks that are outside of your current network. So just because you're in IP, law, or tech, that's great. But what other areas complement those networks and how do you grow that? Uh, and then thinking about just, you know, where do you want to go? Where do you see your career in, in, in six months, a year, three years? And then how do you develop that? And then thinking about creating a strategic advisory board for yourself. So I have one. So most people say, I don't even know what that is. And I say, well, that's, you know, three or four or five people that aren't necessarily your friends because your friends are going to tell you how amazing you are, aren't they? Uh, so these are going to be people that you can count on, knock on their door that are maybe, you know, in different fields where I'm going to say, I'm thinking about making a shift or I'm thinking about this. And they're going to say, you know what, Georgia, that may not be the best move for you. Or um, is that really what you think you should be doing? Or is that the best thing? And they're going to be a bit more critical and are going to help me. And so I have three or five of these people in my life where I'm, when I'm really thinking about a pivot or something, or I'm thinking about a door that needs to be opened, I'm going to go and tap into those people. And those people I keep warm and I steward those relationships like you wouldn't believe, and they're critical to my life. And those are things I think people should be investing in, and most people don't have that. And those are really critical. Yeah, and I know that when you talk about how the data shows that women are not really helping women, it could be different, right? And again, it's like one of these things, it doesn't have to be that hard. And I, I think that it happens where women don't help other women because of the scarcity mindset. And so when we can overcome our fear a little bit more and step into abundance, we find more opportunities for women to help women. Tell us what that means to you and how you see that changing. And then I'll ask you about your story with chips too. Yeah. Well, so it was interesting. So, you know, when I was doing my research, of course, you know, I, I sort of tell the little famous story. I was sort of knee deep into the qualitative and doing interviews and then partway through, you know, because the question was very neutral. So tell me about like the biggest barrier you had in your upward mobility. And I was expecting, you know, men, institutional bias, children. And the question, the answer was often other women. I was like, what the heck, you know? So I remember thinking, well, I thought that, well, that was my experience, but I thought it was me. And I didn't think it was other women facing the same thing. And then I realized there's a whole body of research around this space. So what's interesting is it is a little bit of misogyny of women towards other women. And in many ways, it is the way we are conditioned when we are younger, right? That we are conditioned to be competitive with each other, that there's only limited numbers of people. And when you, when you think about it, when you grow up, if you don't see, you know, 50, 50, in the C-suite, you're thinking, well, there's only one. So I'm going to, you know, it's, it's only one of us they represent it. But the reality is, if we don't see each other's competition and we see each other's collaboration, it does change our mindset. And so, you know, I, I strongly believe, I've always really believed that, you know, each of us, you know, there's a plan for all of us. So if you get ahead of me, good for you. I hope then that you are going to then make room for other people as well and use that to your advantage and, and create a pathway for other people and not feel like all of us have to work just as hard to get you, you know, to get there. Hopefully you're going to say just because I worked hard, I'm going to make it easier for the next person, not harder. 
uh, and hopefully change the mindset. So I think that actually is how we lift each other up, not you know tearing the other person down. So to me, that's the most important way forward and actually creating the levers to do that and actually creating room at the table for each other. Um, and so that actually changes the mindset and changes, I think, the, the, the playing field in many, many, many ways. So part of that is using our voices, using the opportunity. And I've certainly done that in my career. Um, you know, whenever I, I've had an opportunity to do that, I've created programs, I've done all sorts of things for that. So that, that for me is very critical. And the research has shown that if we do do that, and the more women that you have on boards, so the more women that you have at the table actually does change the landscape and changes the opportunities for other women. Yeah. And so how does that play out in an organization like CHIPS, where we have 4,500 members, mostly women, and all of our speakers are women? Yeah. So that's interesting, too, because I think, um, you know, when I've done talks, uh, and I have done talks, <laughs> what's interesting is even the mindset with women with each other. So I've seen that play out when I, you know, you know, in, in different committees and conversations where you can even see the bias come into play. And I've, 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 you know, I've called it out occasionally, I'll tell you that. But it's interesting too, because it's how we've been conditioned, right? So we have to remember that even though you, you have thousands of women, we've all been conditioned differently, we've all been raised differently with our backgrounds uh, and, and how we have, uh, you know, the things that we kind of come forward in terms of who we are as individuals. And so the question then becomes, how do we help each other and recognize there's enough room for everybody but then how do we use our place of privilege? So if you think about CHIPS as a group, we are many women of privilege, right? We're highly educated, we're powerful. We have women who are you know, in, in great places. So how do we use the positions that we hold to open doors for other people and use our voices to advance conversations in much more meaningful ways? And so I think this is really, really, you know, there's an op there's tons of opportunity. I often have to remind people that we all have more power than we think. So you talked about the power of one at the beginning. You have way more power than you think. Let me tell you. Yeah, tell us. What it, tell me what more about what you mean. Well, the thing is, you know, what most people don't realize, and I think this is interesting, is people always say, well, you know, I don't know what I can do. You know, I don't. I'm thinking you have more power than you can even begin to imagine. So, you know, it's interesting. I was coaching somebody, um, you know, a few weeks, a couple of weeks back and, and she called me, she's like, you know, I have such chaos right now. And I said, why? And she said, well, she, you know, she, she was transitioning from one job, negotiating something else. There was potentially something else. And she said, there's such chaos. And I went, so she was talking, talking, talking. And I smiled and I said, you have more clarity than I've ever heard. And she said, what do you mean? I said, someone just gave you closure. You've got an opportunity with high, great negotiation, negotiating opportunity. And you've got something else that I think you could have in another year if this doesn't work out. Let me map this out for you. And, and after we talked, you get, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I went, you have power. You don't have chaos. You have power. And it was just not being able to see it. It was just so much. She felt overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And just talking to somebody else, it was, here, let me show you the roadmap of what you've got. So sometimes I think... You know, we don't realize the power that we hold and we don't realize that actually collectively as a voice, we can we actually have more ability and you have to be in the driver's seat of your life. If you don't realize that you actually have decisions, negotiating power, most of us don't even realize we don't negotiate very well. We, you know, if you don't realize you can do that, then you're giving up that power, you know. And this is the issue that we often have. We kind of go in thinking, well, I don't know, am I really worth it? It's the confidence, it's the ability to speak, it's the ability to say, yeah, I know what I'm worth. If you don't know what I'm worth, then we have to have another conversation. That's so powerful, Georgia. And what you yes. did for this woman, <laughs> <laughs> what you did for this woman is so powerful because that's the role of coach, advisor, mentor. And if we don't have people like you in our lives, who gives us that feedback, right? And so just that action that you took in that moment was really fantastic. I just want to give a shout out to Melissa Andrew, who's a fabulous CHIPS member who's been on LinkedIn Live and shared that it's such an important reminder to take the time, even 15 minutes to help other women. And it doesn't always have to be much more than that, right? But that 15 minutes could be such a difference for the in the life of someone else. Um, and we shouldn't be too busy to hold out a hand and lift up others. And um, Georgia, we were talking about this before the we started too, that it's also important that we include men in that space, that while we are CHIPS as an organization for advancing women, men can be part of advocating and advancing women too. Men don't have to be on the stage speaking, they can be behind the scenes lifting up. Yes, 
hundred percent. And, you know, and I, and often like, you know, I talked to you earlier, I said, you know, I wrote a book and uh, I actually dedicated my book to my partner, but, but not just my partner. I mean, I've had been very lucky to have some outstanding men in my life that have been really supportive. Uh, and, and part of that, I think is, you know, you've got men are a, a huge part of the equation. Right. You know, you've got sponsors. If you think about how many men are in organizations, senior leaders, if we don't have them on board as sponsors or as people who are going to open doors and be champions in organizations, then how are we going to change the game? Right. So, you know, I've been I've been to like lots of events where it's all women. And I think, OK, this is really great. We're talking to the converted. <laughs> I need to get them in the room to help us move the you know, move the conversation forward. We need them to kind of create more opportunities for men at the table. So this is really wonderful, but we need to change the game. So if you're speaking only to you know women, then that's wonderful. And I great that we, we empowered you all and you got all excited. That's wonderful. But I need the men at the table as well, right? We need all genders at the table to be able to have the conversation and, and, and change the dial and move it forward. Um, and I also say to young women, when you're thinking about your life and where you want your life to go if you're ambitious, and you're thinking about, you know, again, all genders, whatever partner you pick, you make sure that you're having conversations early about your ambitions and you make sure that those are clear. And you talk about the dynamic of what you want in that relationship early on. So important to have that conversation and to be clear. And, to, and that's the beginning part of advocating for oneself. 100%. In a relationship where if you're going to spend the majority of your life with someone, you need to be clear on understanding and expectations expectations um tell us about what inclusion looks like and we were talking about innovation too just this idea that if we don't have everyone included then we're going to get innovation that looks a certain way that's not going to be thinking about everyone in that innovation cycle so what is the role that we can play in inclusion and innovation yeah, you know, it's interesting. There was an article that came out today in, in Canada, um, and it was talking about, you know, the lack for, for innovation to succeed. You need different perspectives, different ideas. And the reality is, you know, we still don't have a lot of perspectives within the innovation space. I mean, it's still very male dominated. We don't have a lot of women represented. We don't have a lot of BIPOC and we need more of that. And the reality is, if you have even one woman or people from marginalized communities within that, we see that those organizations actually perform better. Uh, and the reality is they perform better because they have different perspectives. And not only that, but we also see those organizations actually see the untapped opportunities and see areas that actually, you know, a homogeneous group does not see. And so those organizations actually perform stocks do better, organizations do better, their market values do better. So there is a real opportunity to think about how do you invest and do more. And so, you know, for me, when we think about inclusion, that, you know, when we think about what's not at the table, you have to be thinking about, well, what opportunities are you also missing from an investment perspective, from, you know, a global perspective? And, you know, what's not there? Think about what you're missing. So that's really, really, I think, important. And, and then I think about the world as a global, you know, a, a global place. And, and reality is if you're not thinking about the world from that perspective, you're missing out on opportunity, full stop. Like that is our world today. I mean, if you think about, you know, I asked you this, Marcy, where are you? And you said, you know, you're you're in the Bay Area. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I, I, I live in Toronto. And you think about the world is so interconnected today. If you do not think of the world from an innovation perspective, a pers you know, a perspective of the world in terms of problem solving, that it looks at every problem globally and thinking about, you know, everything that is going to interact from every perspective and, you know, just not only from different genders, different ethnicities, different everything from an inclusive perspective, your stuff is not going to succeed. It's that simple. So if you don't have people and you're not investing in people that bring that, that are like that in your organization, how are you going to succeed? You might succeed short term, but not long term. Oh, I can't hear you, Monica. No, because I was muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I was thinking, what's going on? I was thinking about the power of chips and how we have so much influence in this organization. So many smart women who are driving innovation in their organizations, in their law firms, in their businesses, and their um, across government. And 
there is this huge opportunity to start to change that. Um, you talk about how women startups are underfunded, and I think there is this power to start to make that change. What would you most like to see in that space? Well, for sure, I'd like to see a lot more women. Um, and part of that, I think, you know, comes when I when I talk to women in that space. What's interesting to me is, you know, for sure, the, there's a lack of funding. Uh, but part of that comes, I think, from when I talk to women is their ability to present themselves. You know, I was, um, you know, I was I was invited to uh, be a mentor for a, a hackathon for peace. And I'm very excited about that. That's coming up. But one of the things is, you know, I'm not a technical person, but I'm more on the non-technical side. And so part of the discussion was, you know, the technical people are really good at the tech stuff. The, the challenge is how do you get them to think about how do you present? How do you speak? you know, the confidence piece. So when someone's drilling you, you know, how do you kind of present back? And so part of it is is that, part of it is the network of where do you go to develop the, the ability to kind of build, build the strength that you need to get the funding that you need as well. And so I, I think part of that for women specifically is that we just don't, we don't build it that well. And we have a bit of the loyalty trap, I'm gonna say, whereas, you know, men will go out and just kind of, you know, we tend to go, no, no, we're, you know, we were true to our brand. Um, and to the things that we want to be able to do. So I think we have to kind of change our mindset a little bit um, and, and rethink what it is that we know. And the other part of it is, I think, is we we have to be a little bit more risk takers. So women don't take risks. And that actually was also in my research. You know, we don't take the kind of risks that men will take. Um, and so we tend to be a bit more conservative with the things that we do. So I think all of those things play into the innovation space with how we want to grow, build, um, and, and take things a little bit further. So I think all of those things I'd like to see us change a little bit if we want to, you know, move on up. I would too. And coming back to this power of one, sometimes the ability to take a risk to overcome fear is um, because one person said, I believe in you. One person said, I'm going to give you this opportunity. One person who gave 15 minutes of their time or $10,000, right? Like sometimes it's these small things that actually make a huge difference for someone to be able to say, oh, you know what? She believes in me. He believes in me. I could believe in myself too. These, They believe in me and I can believe in myself and I can actually take that step. So what's really funny is the reason the book is called Why Not You <laughs> that I wrote is I cannot tell you how many times I've been sitting across the table or, or across the screen and I'd be talking to women and they'd be telling me, you know, all the reasons they cannot do something. And I remember even there was one woman, this is about a year and a half ago, and it was somebody referred her for a job with us at corporate class. And I saw so was, you know, and she kept telling me all the reasons she was not qualified for the job, even though she was referred. <laughs> and I, and um, I just kept thinking, you know, like, why not you, right? And I, and I cannot tell you how many times I would sit across from table and women would tell me all the reasons they were not qualified for these roles. And, and so I'm like, so if you see the cover of the book, I'm literally like going, you know, <laughs> why not you? And so I'll put it up again. It's, it's at hewwomen.com, W-H-E-W women.com. And it's free resources for women. Yeah. Why not you challenging diversity and inclusion assumptions? Yeah, and hundred percent of the proceeds from the book go to our nonprofit. Um, and so what's interesting, what was so interesting for me about that is, it, and you know, there was some data that came out a few years ago um, from a Harvard study that said that, you know, women apply when they only have 90% of the qualifications that apply when they have 60%. So again, it's this mindset of, you know, I don't qualify, I'm not good. We talk about the imposter syndrome, which I absolutely, I hate that term. Um, and I hate that term because I don't think anyone's an imposter. You're like fabulous the way you are. So this whole thing of, you know, um, not thinking that you're actually good enough to be able to do the things that you do. And so I, I, I really strongly believe that you, you don't take risks. Like if you don't try, you're not going to get. So just go out there and do it. You fail, so what? Dust off, pick up, and keep going. And if you don't take risks, you're going to be exactly where you are. So why not you? Why not today? What's the worst that's going to happen? You fail. So what? Right? You know? Such important advice that we can't hear enough of, honestly. But, so I failed. Big deal. I'm going to try again. I'm going to get up and try again. Like, I'm just going to learn from that and move forward. Like, did the world just come to an end because I failed today? No, I just learned a really good lesson. All right, I'm going to move on. Yeah. You yeah. know, I didn't have that mindset. That's called the growth mindset. 
Yeah. Siham Haddad, I hope I'm saying her name right, said, excellent advice as always, Dr. Georgette. It's always a refreshing reminder to hear your insight. And I absolutely agree. This has been fantastic. I would love to have you share with us how you found chips, because I know there's a really great story in there. <laughs> it's so funny. So um, I, I found chips through uh, uh, Mona, and uh, I'd met her at a talk, and then I had said, oh, Mona Sabat is one of our founders of Chips, yeah, yeah. for those who don't know. Yeah, she's right. one of my favorite people. I love her. She's wonderful. And then I had uh, was supposed, I was supposed to give a talk uh, in 2020 at one of your summits on diversity and inclusion, and then, of course, COVID happened. And so I'd reached out and said, well, you know what? Uh, why don't I just do something with the Canadian office? I'm sure, you know, your, your Canadian chapter, and they said, well, we don't actually have one. I'm like, how do you not have a Canadian chapter? <laughs> you know, Kendra so big. And so they yeah. said, well, would you like to kind of, you know, help us create one? I said, sure. Um, and then they said, oh, wait, wait a minute, but you're not a lawyer. <laughs> That's what I wanted to be one at one point. And so they said, okay, well, let's create a group. And then um, and then they said, well, you know, we'd like you to create one, but we, you know, we need a co-lead who's, a, who's a, a lawyer. I said, oh, okay. So then they, they introduced me to this woman named um, Sharzad Esmailing. And uh, I said, okay, didn't know her, uh, but I always say the best gift they ever gave me. She's absolutely wonderful. I adore her. Uh, we actually met in person for the first time this summer, and she's just so lovely. And I'm so thrilled that she's uh, the co-pilot of this uh, this project with us in Canada. And best thing ever. And my my new friend, and we have a great great chapter. And uh, just thrilled. And so now we have two chapters in Canada. There's a Toronto chapter, and then there's another chapter that is just built them. Our hope, our hope is that we can continue to grow these chapters across Canada. And so just thrilled that I was part of the inaugural group in, in, in Canada. And look at that. It's and, outstanding. And just to reiterate just the how powerful this is, right? This ability to help others, that you came in, you helped create a CHIPS chapter. You it was the inaugural Canadian chapter, and you gained this huge network of people who are fabulous. Yeah, they're wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> And I love the work that it does. And of course, it aligns very much with my values of, you know, supporting women, supporting innovation, you know, create, you know, creating voices. And of course, and then it does, it, you know, very much aligns with the inclusion and diversity piece as well. So just thrilled to be part of it. Oh, it's, it's been so much fun talking with you, Dr. Georgette, Georgette Zanotti. Um, just such a wonderful, so glad to have you as part of the CHIPS community. Um, we will be back here in two weeks. You can join us Thursdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern. And um, I've just had a great time. Thank you for those incredible insights and um, perspective, as always. Thank you. My privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you.